In today's video, we're making art from grandma's lamp. More specifically, we're making mosaic Christmas ornaments and we'll do it in a peak assiette style. It's time to get ready for the holidays. Let's get to it. Welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Julie. And on this channel, we talk about tips, tricks, tools, adhesives, materials, and specific mosaic projects, all to shorten your learning curve when it comes to creating mosaic art. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing. To get started, this is part two of a two-part series. In part one, I created mosaic Christmas ornaments in a peak assiette style using my client's dinner plates, and I will link that video down below so you can check it out. Today, we're making peak assiette mosaic Christmas ornaments for my dinner plate client. This time around, though, she has asked that I create three ornaments from a vintage lamp or at least it started off as just three ornaments. I'll explain a little later in the video. But first, let's talk about what is Peak Assiette Mosaic. Peak Assiette is French for thief of plates. You may also hear it referred to as bits and pieces, shardware, and memory wear. It combines pieces of plates, bowls, mugs, cups, crockery, and found objects that are put together to create a truly unique, one-of-a-kind mosaic. So my dinner plate client has asked that I create her three ornaments from her grandparents' lamp. So first off, you know, you're thinking vintage and very sentimental. She asked me to create these ornaments to give to her brothers as Christmas gifts. As you can see from the lamp, it's definitely 70s inspired. Between the shape and that gorgeous blaze, look at that thick yellow, orange, and red. Gorgeous. Contrasting so nicely on the white background. All I can think of when I look at this lamp is some sort of 70s reference like, yeah, baby, totally groovy. Breaking down this lamp and creating art is going to be a fun challenge. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. To give you a little background on this lamp, my client did warn me ahead of time before she shipped it to me that it was cracked. And to be quite honest, I was way okay with that because I really didn't know how thick the walls were going to be of this lamp. Obviously, it's a lamp, so it does need to be somewhat thick and structurally safe. But I also knew that thicker walls of a lamp were going to be harder to break down into smaller, more usable sized pieces. After receiving the lamp, my first step was figuring out how to break it down. I decided to use a hammer and chisel and start with what looked like the biggest or most cracked portion of the crack, if that makes sense. The part that was definitely cracked all the way through to the center of the lamp. Some of the other cracks seemed like they were just hairline cracks. So I laid the crack on its side and got started with the hammer and chisel. Getting the crack to fully crack from end to end took a lot of effort. Despite being cracked, it didn't want to fully break. So I used the hammer and chisel along the crack, working from the area that was most cracked then moving on to the hairline cracks until it finally broke. This was definitely a workout.
the more bulbous, whiter part of the lamp was much easier to crack and break down than the neck. The neck just wasn't having it. It did not want to crack, break, and certainly wasn't going to make it easy for me. And then there were sparks. I mean, what's a mosaic project without some fire, right? So this was kind of exciting. Once I got it broken up a bit, I could see just how thick the walls were. The thick pieces, even broken down into a much smaller size, would still be thicker than I wanted for the ornaments. So I used the hammer and chisel to chisel off the glaze from the ceramic. I wanted to get as many larger pieces of glaze as I could. Some of the glaze pieces seemed to almost pop off with very little effort, and then there were some that were much more difficult. Once I got enough glaze pieces for the three ornaments, I was ready to start tiling. But first, I did do a little dumpster diving in the towel just to save some of the smaller glazed tessera. As I tiled, grouted, and finished off the ornaments along with the plate ornaments, my client ordered three more lamp ornaments. So now it's a total of six ornaments from the lamp. And just like with the first batch of ornaments, these ornaments will also be on rectangular shaped substrates. Let me show you what I did. The substrates have all been sealed on both sides and painted on both sides prior to me getting started with tiling. And just like with the first batch, I went with a dark gray paint. Because the glaze pieces are almost paper thin, I needed to use a good supportive adhesive, so I chose Thinset Mortar. I applied the adhesive a little differently than I normally do because the glaze tesserae are so thin. I wanted to do what I could to support the tesserae from underneath. So I'm talking about between the substrate and the back of the tesserae. So I applied adhesive to the substrate and then carefully applied more adhesive to the entire back of each tessera. Doing this would create a really strong foundation for these thin pieces. So I continue tiling, making sure that each ornament was a different design. The glazed tesserae, being the way that it is, which is so original and unique, wouldn't allow me to make a duplicate design from ornament to ornament, even if I tried. Once the ornaments were dry and the thin set mortar had cured, I grouted with dark gray grout, just like the first batch. And finally, the ornaments were finished off with black velvet ribbon, again, just like the first batch. And there you have it, peak Asiette ornaments from Grandma and Grandpa's lamp. Question of the day, let me know down in the comments if you've ever created a mosaic using a sentimental piece of pottery. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up as it really does help my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell notification so you never miss a single upload and let me know in the comments if there's something you'd like me to cover in a future video. I'll see you soon. Bye. No. <laughs> start over. S start over. Oh my gosh. Start over. <laughs> oh. All right. Get your composure. Hmm. Okay. Serious. Get serious here. Hmm. Okay. All right. Hmm. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> oh my 
goodness gracious me oh my <laughs> If you're looking for more mosaic inspiration, you can check out one of these two videos. Until then, see ya. Oh, let me stop. <laughs>